Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. And this is a paid request for Carson. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, it could be for a random topic, movie news, tier list, ranking, movie review, re review, video game playthrough, whatever the case may be. PayPal's usually usually the best bet. Just make sure they use the family and friends option. Otherwise PayPal takes a cut of it. Or Cash App I do have because people have asked about that. I do have a Patreon. People have asked about that as well. Those links are down below in the info box. And I'll get to it as soon as I can. So thank you. I really appreciate it. But Toys in the Attic from 2009, which I would never heard of this before, but it's from the Czech State Fund. That's literally one of the first things it says. And this is the version that has dubbed in English with actors like Forrest Whitaker, John Tuzak, Terry Ellis, and it's pretty much if you take Toy Story, mix it with Tim Burton, which I thought was an interesting concept, and I will say visually, it was very neat to see visually. It's like a the visual aesthetic is a darker version of Toy Story, a lot of stop motion animation, which I'm a sucker for. So it was nice to see that technique being used. The characters, Forrest Whitaker is this bear, this toy bear, that's the station manager for this toy train that the characters utilize. Uh, you have this female doll named Buttercup. Uh, Terry Ellis plays this Spanish puppet marionette. The only reason they got Terry Ellis is that uh, he just say the line, Buttercup, my princess bride. I'm like, that's literally the only reason, okay. I see now. Come on, man, but okay. Although most of the time, like, I had to listen closely to, oh yeah, okay, that is Terry Ellis. And then there's this other figure, kind of a gunk-like figure that has like a pencil for a nose that if it goes splat and falls apart, it could get itself together again, much smaller than the other characters. So that thing, Forrest Whitaker's bear and Terry was marionette, they all know the female doll Buttercup. They wake up, they have dinner with her, they go all about their day. The marionette will have this little toy sword thing and play with this inflatable toy like it's a dragon and puncture it. And then this monkey doctor comes down to pump it back up and fix it. Oh, you defeated my, my monster. Forrest Weir will have the train going, but then as soon as it starts going, it just goes back to sleep because he likes to sleep a lot. Long story short, this head bust this head statue and this part of the attic known as the land of evil sends its creatures down to kidnap the female doll buttercup and like I said I do appreciate the visual look of the film I like the stop motion animation I appreciate the designs of the characters like these little bugs hide in this fake ladybug so it's like a ladybug toy that kind of to be pulled around but I like the idea that a bunch of real little bugs hide in this fake bigger bug like its own children horse I thought that was kind of interesting this is one little creature that's like a bug but it's got like a human face probably the the one that's the most out there is they show a real cat like it's a real black cat but then It'll walk around, you know, on its fours. But then it'll change to a stop motion where he puts on a suit and a disguise and a fake mustache. And will, like, tie someone up to make the train derail or disguise and kidnap someone. And then it'll, like, take his stuff off and it'll turn back to a real cat walking on all fours. For some reason I like that idea. That was probably my favorite idea in the movie, and I got a kick out of that. I don't know why. I just I like the idea of a real cat becoming this. I don't know. I didn't expect that. I didn't. 
I figure, okay, it's a real cat. It's just going to chase the characters. Try to get them, uh, eat them, paw at them, whatever. Not that it was going to turn to a stop motion thing and then back to it. So, Because I haven't seen that done a whole lot with those type of animal stuff. There's this point where two humans, a daughter, and I think it was her grandma, they come up, I guess they get some clothes, or hang up some clothes, and then they go back down again. That's the only time we see them, though. I thought that would be more important when we got to the third act, but no. It's there just for the girl to get the doll, and then put her in a higher spot so that she's not in the, the best place to help which makes her get lost and fall into the hands of the the bad guys so good job little girl you fucked up what's the hand say to the face slap <laughs> no nah, nah, it's, it's she's just a little girl it's not her fault it is her fault but she didn't do it on purpose now like i said the, i will keep repeating that the visual looked at the film as interesting but sadly I was not a fan of the movie because the narrative was really boring the narrative was really boring and although this is a 90 minute movie or 80 some minute movie it felt like a chore to sit through because there's no big narrative drive in terms of the characters aren't there they don't, they don't really have much personality. There's not... I mean, there's dialogue, but there's really nothing of note. It's been much more on the stop motion and a lot less on the script and the narrative. And there's a big lack of heart, too. And so, like, this stuff is happening, but I would sit there and go, why should I care? I barely know these characters, they had dinner with each other, they go about their day, but I have no reason to care about the characters. And that's, you look at Toy Story, completely different. You got to know who the characters are, their personalities, how they interact with each other, um, how you know, Tom Hanks' character thinks of Tim Allen's character and vice versa, and you see the development and an arc and overcoming this and that. Like, there's an actual story to it, which then helps you have a bit more heart to it, which makes you care about what's going on. Here, they definitely focus much more on the visual aspects of it. And it's cool to watch for a while but then when it's a full movie you kind of get used to it and now you're asking yourself okay but what else is there to the movie like it's the point where the the dunk guy he kind of gets locked outside and a lot of is like him trying to get back in the the bear and the marionette for his weird turn carry always they're on their journey together but other than someone opened up a closet and this blue blanket comes out, or sheet, not blanket, but this blue sheet comes out, which is trying to mimic the ocean, so they're kind of acting like they're in the ocean ready to drown, but they get out of it. But they don't do a whole lot, these two characters. They don't go through a whole lot. They don't go through a whole lot of endeavors. They don't fight. They don't really get to do a whole lot. At one point, they meet a mouse played by Joan Cusack, which she is helping build this plane. So while the two are off doing that, she gets this plane done, gets a bunch of other people there, and they fly off. One shot I did like was this painter that had, I don't know, like three eyes. It was like a black creature with three eyes that didn't talk at all. A kind of painting look at the the plane and painting then we see his painting and then we see the painting plane come alive and fly away grand I mean they didn't have a whole lot to do with the narrative but it was kind of an interesting visual but again that's kind of the thing it just 
it'll have some interesting visuals, but I don't think it told the most satisfying or fun or intriguing story. Like I say, it lacks in narrative and it lacks in heart. Because again, you sit there and go, why should I care? Why should I care? And then this weird thing, like the the spoiler alert, spoilers. The plane lands. They meet the Forest Warrior Terry Elwes, the the bear and the marionette, and then they get together and work together. Then they apparently the bad guys made a bunch of fake buttercups. How they? I don't remember how they made them. All these fake female dolls. They might have said it, and I completely forgot. But I'm like, how did you all make all these? You made like fifty of them. And they sound like her, and they look like her. I mean, how the hell did you do all that? Then nonchalantly, the, I think Joan Cusack finds the real one. And then it's not even like this big battle. Like, there's certain bug and other creations that the bad guy has. You don't really see what happens to them. I think the marionette, Terry Ellis, like, fights a little bit, but you don't see a whole lot of that. It's pretty much, I think Joan Cusack, there's this light that they turn on and the head bus gets pissed. What do you do with that? He's like on top of this cabinet thing, he's moving it. The characters kind of get something under the cabinet when it's hopping. So when it does that, it wobbles, falls. Uh, the, the dunk creature gets on his face so he can't see. It falls, crashes, crumbles. And then the rest of the bad guys, like, disappear. And I'm saying, okay, where, where did those bad guys go? Where did the bud-like creatures go? Where did all these other creatures go? They just stedaddled, got the hell out of Dodge, disappeared. I'm like, where did they all go? <laughs> Same with the cat. The last time you see the cat is Buttercup the doll tries to escape. The cat grabs her, gives her back. Then you never see the cat again. I'm like, what happened to the cat? Why is the cat not there? Why are our characters not fighting the cat? Or getting the cat out of the attic? Or something. You never see the cat again. So that cat never gets any final moments of either getting his comeuppance or anything. Same with a lot of the creatures. So it just felt like you, we added that, but there's no payoff. They find the, the doll, the, giver, the bear has done nothing. He's like the lead hair to Forrest Winter. He's done nothing throughout the film. Except, oh, now he has this thing. Give her a little slip. Hopefully, you know. Don't be Bill Crosby, but no. Gives her a little bit. She snaps out of it. Awakens. They leave. And for some reason, like, they add this where the bear has this clock. And then it cracks. And it becomes like a black hole and is sucking things up. And then he escapes and the plane, like, hey, grab this rope, he grabs it, they fly away. And I'm like, what does this all have to do with what the hell was happening before? And why, it's like you need a bear, why was he given this gift in the first place? And what kind of gift was this? And, okay, it sucked up some of the debris in that area, but it didn't solve anything. It didn't make anything better. It's like, well, we need something to happen so the bear's in trouble, and then he gets saved. I guess. It's like, yeah, but how does it pertain to anything else? Who gives a shit? Why do you give a shit? What happened to the cat? What happened to the humans? You never see them again. What happened to the other creatures that was working with the, the bad guy? No, it just ends with all the good people having dinner and then in the Buttercup's dollhouse and the movie's over. So it felt like Terry Elwes and Forrest Winter, they didn't really have much to do in the film. Those characters, uh, other characters kind of just, there's no again, finale, no comeuppance, nothing with them. So a lot of times I'm sitting there going, like, what's going on here? Like, so, like I said, uh, it's cool to look at. I think if you looked at clips, you looked at the trailer, 
you kind of see enough of that visual style. But I wish they concentrated as much on the narrative, on the story, on the characters, as much as they did with the stop motion. Just I had no reason to care about these characters. I had no... Again, there's nothing humor-wise, dialogue-wise. It lacked heart. And that's a... It's, Toys in the Attic is a case of... Visuals can only get you so far. If you have nothing else, then it just... Just... If, it looks nice, but it falls a bit flat. So, that's just me. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. Thanks once again to Carson. And uh, it was nice to watch once for the visuals, but after that, there's not a whole lot else to it. So, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.